Hello and welcome back to Trigger Happy Havoc. These look like the fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't really be sure, but I feel like I've seen something like it before. Where? Wait, wait, was it there? I have to double check that later. Fragments near the dead body. I'm not sure. I would guess probably the secret room, maybe? Uh, what do you guys got? Hmm. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and? For serious. Well, I was just thinking about when we first found the body. We found when the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember what that was. On Akuma's announcement, won't be up at 7 as usual. Headed to the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was about 7.30. And I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. Time's it there. Hmm. By now, Toko, what time is it? <laughs> when we left the gym, we just before 9, so it's probably the 9 on the, the dot now. They were killed somewhere between 7.30 and 9, which we can tell by the fact the body wasn't wet and would have been if the sprinklers had been on. You know? Ah, now you mention it. I think you're right. So I think we can say for sure the body was found at 9 a.m. Okay, my job's done. That's a pretty small job. Hmm. Good timing, Makoto. I want to talk to you. What do you want to talk about? So, in other words... I'd like to hear your alibi. Alibi? In other words... Correct. I'd love to hear where you were after night time began last night. Um... I, I was sick. I, I was asleep all night. Why are you asking me about that now? What night time got to do with Naturally. it? Naturally. Isn't it obvious? This murder took place after night time. How can you know that for sure? Hmm. Because just after night time began, I came to the garden. I was going around looking for everyone so that I could tell them about Monokuma. Hiro's been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days. I figured he'd be here. I could confirm that when I arrived last night, there was no body here. In other words... So the murder could only have taken place at some point during night time, after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, Hina and I were in the gym together the entire night last night. What? Hmm. Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's rooms to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. The only one who doesn't have an alibi... I mean Kyoko. That's right. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one without an alibi. Hmm. Also, when we went to get Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. What? But you never came to the door. So, where precisely were you? Telling the truth, I was in my room, but... I, I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... <laughs> that's hardly an alibi. I know. <laughs> so, what now? You seem to be quite at quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one with a hand to an alibi, that's... That's really bad, isn't it? Especially given that the murder weapon was in my room. Because, I mean... Giant flaming knife, pretty obviously the murder weapon. But what was used to beat her over the back of the head? So who does the body belong to? Whoever it is, I'm not gonna look. I don't want to faint anymore. Listen, Makoto, do you remember how the body looked? You know, before it blew up, uh, if I remember right, it was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. There was this knife sticking up the stomach, and the arrow around it was stained with blood. Apparently the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood on the body was still wet. Bayaka said not to touch it, to avoid getting it all bloody. But for how much blood there was in the body, I, I don't see any on the ground around it. Okay. Wow, thanks. It was big help now that you explained it. I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it a lot too. So, thank you too. Body before the explosion. This is the panel that controls the sprinklers. It's set to turn off 7th order every morning and Monokuma said the time positively couldn't be changed. Hold on. The sprinklers turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? Now, if the body was here before, the sprinkler should have gotten it wet. Which would mean the murder must have taken place. Sprinkler. Yeah, I figured that. So, I'm assuming the chickens are going to be important in some way. 
remember there were some chickens in the chicken coop. Yep, we're missing a chicken. How did I know the number of chickens was going to factor into this somehow? Christ alone knows how, but... Huh? Four? Yo! What's going on, Makoto? I'm glad you're here. Listen, how many chickens are in here? Hmm. Of course, though precisely five. Yeah, right? Huh? What's wrong? There's only four chickens here now, but one's yours. Huh? Ah! Huh? <laughs> so weird. I wonder when it disappeared. What? I was down here just before night time last night. There were definitely five chickens then. What, what are we going to do? Going from five to four is going to have an impact on the structure of the world. Conspiracy. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If a single piece disappears, the entire world remains unfinished. I did my best to ignore Hero and focus on the problem at hand. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it be related to the case? Let's face it, the only plausible person is Kyoko. And that's too obvious. Just to be sure, I should take a look at the tool shed. The room is dusty, disorganized. In other words, pretty stereotypical tool shed. Is this a tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? I should probably look into that. It could be related to the case. I have a theory. It's a very loose theory with bugger all evidence to support it, but... Bayakua did it with help from Toko. That's a theory. That is my working theory. Purely because she's the only one who's actually bonkers enough to be willing to die to please Master. It's a theory. It's a theory. I have no evidence, and I'm not going to be looking for the evidence to support that theory. It's just something I'm keeping in mind. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime. The underside is totally clean and completely dry. One side of the top is wet and dirty. Something about that bothers me. That's the one thing in here that concerns me. The pickaxe is still there, I on the card and handle is pickaxe. Crazy diamond. Pickaxe is connected to the somehow, but... No, now's not the time to think about it. Alright, I think that's everything in here, he said. I think I've checked everything I need to in this area. But I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check. Specifically that fragment I found before. There's somewhere I need to go in order to confirm my suspicions. I still need to find out more about Kyoko. Is that corpse really Kyoko? I mean, if it's true... Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? If I can find out more about her, maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be able to find out more. Key to her room. It's all clear now. I will simply limit your options. I can't allow you to engage in any further suspicious activity. What? Limit my options. Just give, give up. me give me the key to your room. I don't have a choice. I'll have to see if they'll let me borrow a room key. Okay. Dude, I need the key. Um, Bayakua. Hmm. If you do and come up with an alibi, I'll be happy to hear it later at the class trial. No no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You're the prime suspect after all. What? Of course, if I would go with you, that would be a different story. Then will you go with me? Hmm. Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later on the sea. Goodbye. Depending on my mood, I may go with you. Or I may not. Come back later, huh? <sighs> okay, then. In the meantime, I should look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out that one area. Okay, so... Things that explode. Onakuma? Yeah, it seems to wreck the gym.
Onokuma's laying dismantled on the floor, but I figured it wouldn't be here. You know? I just found something. What is it? It it's huh? it's what? Hm. A bomb. There's one installed in every Monokuma robot, I'm sure. So somebody took the bomb, put it on the body. What? What? A bomb. And that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about that. The fragments are found in the garden. Has been updated. Okay, I've checked everything else. I can pick off. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. Head back to the garden. Ask Biakua. At least the load time is pretty damn short. <laughs> Alright, dude. Do you think you can go soon, Payakala? Let's go. You wanted to check out Kyoko's room, right? Oh, very well, let's go. Wait for me. Bayakawa walked off without a second glance and I hurried after him on our way to the dorms. Hmm. Well then, here we go. Bayakawa took out the key and slid to the keyhole, and then... <laughs> and it's open. Looks like it, thanks. Okay, in we go. So, this is Kyoko's ring. So, what the hell is that? There's something on the table. It would block decoration? What? What's that? What purpose does it serve? I think it's probably a key. The lockers are those really traditional public bathhouses using for their lockers. Hmm. I would know. I've never gone to a public bathhouse. That doesn't really surprise me. I can picture Bayakua doing something like that. It's certainly possible. But if it is a key, I think I might know what it unlocks. Really? What? Hmm. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure I saw something at the dojo that this might go to. Dojo? What block key has been added? What? You wanted to come here, right? What is it you're looking for? Nothing in particular. I just thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us... Understand, Kyoko? Come on! You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time out of my search to come here? Sorry. <laughs> Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete? Oh, I know! <laughs> Earlier, Kyoko gave me something. What is this? It's true. Consider it a symbol of my determination. Don't open it yet. Only open it if. Something happens to him. I'm sure I had it here somewhere. Found it! Hmm. What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if anything ever happened, I should open it. Hmm. Interesting. Well, something has certainly happened, so open it. Okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. And inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets? What? That's all that was in there? Yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets, what could it be? Check the bed here, numbskull. But it could suddenly be hidden under the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I looked up the sheets. What's this? I found a crumpled piece of paper. Class number 78, student registry. Mukuru Hisukaba. I see. It appears to be Muru. It appears to be Mukuru Isukaba's profile. Yeah, it looks like it. That's probably the other thing Kyoko stole while she was snuck into the headmaster and along with the key. God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It was a key and a... And that's it. This must be the blank that Monokuma was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning was unappealing. And this is what she left behind. Hmm. I don't have time for your sentimental indulges. Hurry up, finish your search. Uh, okay. I may have an effort to pull myself back together and look down at the profile sheet. Name, Mukuru Isukaba. Sex, female, the ultimate soldier. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. 
She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary school, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information, and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. That would explain the wolf's head tattoo. She insists that they hadn't been kidnapped and that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Ukuru's profile has been added to the truth bullet section. The ultimate soldier, a mercenary group. This doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. A one's non-fiction and the other sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. That's how different this is. That was how I saw things, as just an ordinary person, but then... I see. I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. You recognize it? Naturally. The Fenrir Mercenary Corps is a collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. It's still part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. Hmm. I have to say, I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard said that Fenrir has already... Found it! Whoa! I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player and a bit player is becoming our hero. Ah, it's you. Wah -wah? What have you gotten in your pretty little hand there? What? what? You found a profile? So what if we did? Hey! Oh, don't freak out on me. I'm not going to hold it against you or anything. In any case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Kyoko either. Even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami, who broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag a corpse out here and slice it up and devour it. There's our omnivores, you know. What? A rule violation's really so unforgivable. I'm quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Hmm. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication to an organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to follow the regulations myself. So you're saying you have to follow your own rules as well? Of course! Absolutely! I can't have you complaining about how unfair it is, now can I? Hmm. In fact, on the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting. <laughs> it's all about the one writing all the rules. They're actually... one of the participants in this killing game! I don't think I ever actually told you how many participants there actually were, did I? Hmm. I was thinking I should probably clarify that. When you all first got here in the main hallway, there were 15 people there, right? I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you all. A misunderstanding? Are you saying... In other words... That's right! There weren't actually 15 of you. Yes, indeed! The total number of students taking part in this killing game was actually 16! 16, then... Mukuro Ikusaba. <laughs> yeah. The 16th student, lying hidden somewhere in this school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Hmm. Watch out for her. But he, she's listed as the ultimate soldier, not the ultimate despair. The 16th student, Mukuro Ikusaba. She's part of the school life. So the one making all the regulations is... Why? Why? Huh? Huh? Did you say something? <laughs> Why are you telling us this? Hmm. Well, because, like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we've got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know. Yes, indeed. Makes sense. Well, now. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge? I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Kirigari, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? Hey, um... You know how she wears those stupid gloves all day, in, out, all the time, right? Well, don't tell anyone I told you, but, uh... <laughs> she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars she doesn't want anyone to see. What? <laughs> now that's all you get! <laughs> Monokuma's account. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover up a bunch of scars? So the back of her hand. 
That tattoo. Wait, no. Monica was specifically said there were scars, right? That's why she wears the hide scars. Which means... Those fake nails on the corpse. Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What Horat does right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? Such ignorance. God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Hmm. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mukuru was a student. That's here. right. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukuru was the one creating the rules for the game. Why would he tell us that? Why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. Hmm. The mere fact he says that proves that Makuru is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make our investigation fair. Makuru is related to the case. It's certainly Perhaps possible. Perhaps she's the one who killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That would explain why we would now have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and killed someone, that would make her part of the school killing game. Makuru is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come to that conclusion, don't you think? The tattoo. The tattoo is a wolf's head. Fenrir is a wolf god. Actually, well. Okay, Fenrir. Yeah, Fenrir. I'm sure Fenrir is a Nor. Is he a Norse god? Or is he just a Norse hero? Can't remember. Something to do with the Norse, anyway. In fact, that's exactly what I thought when the investigation first began. What? But, based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. It's all clear now. Mukuru Ikusaba isn't the culprit. What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mukuru, the ultimate despair, was the Mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the Mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good so, point. in other words... Mukuru giving us information that would raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense, then, to assume that Mukuru isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Makuru come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. And the way you say it, it definitely seems possible. And if that's really true, if Makuru isn't the killer, then who is? Hmm. Well then, I believe our work here is finished. Let's move on. Sure, there are other places in need of investigation. Let's find out if that key and the dojo really are Let's connected. Let's go. Well, are you coming? Straight to the lockers. Locker number six, wasn't it? There are wooden lockers here. They use woodblock keys just like the super traditional public bathhouses. And it looks like the key we found in Kyoko's room really does go to one of these lockers. I see. Makoto, you see the locker farthest to the right? Very strange. It's the only one that doesn't have a key in it at the moment. You understand what that means, right? Just use the key we found on that locker, right? That's right. Well, just try it. Okay, okay. Took out the woodblock key and inserted it into the locker's metal lock and click. The locker eagerly accepted the key and it opened. There are arrows in here. Looks like ten total. They look like they're made of titanium, which means they're strong, just about how thin they are. Because without a bow, they're nothing but strong little sticks. Um You can impale the crap out of someone on an arrow if you want to, even without a bow strong sticks. Titanium arrows. Could that be one of the, the source of one of the blows to the head? There's something else inside the locker. What did a ball of duct tape? I wonder what this was used for. Is that a blood stain? I see. If it is, it means that it must surely be related to the case. This duct tape is related to the case somehow? How could it possibly be involved? Bloody duct tape. Spiffy. I think that's all the locker has to offer for now. Is something wrong? Very strange. It's very odd, don't you think? The locker was hiding items that were clearly related to the case. How did the keys to the locker wind up in the victim's room? Why? Or perhaps... The Akua? Hmm. Forget it. Come on, we need to continue to the next location. What next location? What? There's still something we need to look into. We need to do more research on Fenrir. You mean the mercenary group that Makuru was a part of? How are we supposed to find out about that? Isn't it obvious? Where in the school would you go to do research on something? The archive of creepy stuff, I presume. Are you talking about the archive? That's right. The archive has all kinds of access that the general public doesn't have access to. Let's go. We only have so much time before the trial begins. Let's hurry.
Hmm. I believe there was a fire related to Fenrir. Somewhere over there. The Akula seemed to know the archive like the back of his hand, which stuff straight to a shelf in the back. Hmm. Ah, here we go. We quickly return with the file in hand. So what have you got? I see. Take a look at this. I have no idea what it says. What language is this? Hmm. How did you make it all the way hi through high school without learning a single word of French? I'm pretty sure most high schoolers can't speak French. Once in France can. And for the record, I learned some French at school. Can't remember any of it because I suck at languages. <laughs> well, whatever. I'll read it for you. But I expect you to repay your debt a hundred times over. It's kind of extreme, isn't it? <laughs> Fenrir is an elite fighting unit based out of the Middle East. Unlike military contractors, they are a fierce group of soldiers who, are direct and direct, who engage in direct combat. They claim that a single member is equivalent to an entire company of regular soldiers. Just like the Fenrir, the Wolf of Ragnarok, thank you, I knew it was something to do with Norse mythology. The mere presence is enough to strike fear into any enemy. They have been involved in countless military battles and operations, most of which are highly classified. However, some time ago they completely ceased all activity. At present, their continuous existence cannot be confirmed. There are unconfirmed reports that the key members of this group were all neutralized. Rumors indicate they were killed to keep them from revealing the many state secrets they'd acquired. Some, however, believe that there was mounting internal tension within the group, and they simply imploded. What? What is it? It's all just... sounds like some kind of alternate reality. <laughs> well, it isn't. This is our reality. The only reality. These people are part of our world. Part of your world... Sorry. Their battlefields are much different from lives here. An, unpre an unprecedented, unimaginable world. <laughs> That's what makes it all so exciting. Exciting is not the word I would use. <laughs> Did anything jump out at you? This may be your last opportunity to learn about Fenrir. Now that you mention it. Reports said something about where the name Fenrir comes from, right? <laughs> That's right. The Wolf of Ragnarok. Swing of which, would you like to know something interesting related to that? To show they're a member of the team, each soldier that joins the squad will get a tattoo representing Fenrir somewhere on their body. What? They got a tattoo of Fenrir? Could that mean... Well, yeah, that was bloody obvious. Profile's been updated. Oh, crap. So... My working theory is a load of wild-ass guesswork. I have no goddamn idea who the Time killer is on is this one. Time is silent. And yet it constantly assaults us organisms, the earth, natural phenomena. It damages us little by little until the end. You should really think about that. Yes, thank you. Monica. Anyway, it's time to begin the class trial. So, bastard. please meet up in the usual spot. <laughs> See you later. Hmm. Then the time has come. What we can do now is try to uncover the truth during the class That's trial. Right. It would seem that way. Let's go. <sighs> See, I, I got no goddamn working theory on this. Well, I've got a wild ass guess with no evidence to support mm. it. Whoa, Bayakuo and Makoto showed up together. Uh. Where the heck have you two been? You just disappeared without a word. <laughs> We were investigating, of course. How could you not figure that out by this point? Yeah! Oh, Kodos ranked up enough for you guys just to go off t together? Just the two of you? Huh? What? Are you jealous? Hey. Or are you making up some creepy fantasy for yourself? What? Stop talking and brace yourselves. He'll be here any second. Any second. He could show up at any time. When I imagined what was about to happen, I immediately tensed up and prepared myself. But... We stood there for five full minutes, waiting for something to happen. And then five minutes became ten. Why? What's going on here? Why hasn't Monokuma showed up yet? Could it be? Maybe he died again? Hmm. What should we do? Should we keep waiting here, or...? <laughs> or what? 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 Jesus! <laughs> did I scare ya? Come on! I demand an explanation. Why did you waste my time and make me wait like that? Hmm? What? I made you wait? You've got it all backwards. You're the ones making me wait. Huh? In other words... I'm waiting for everyone to arrive. Can't start until everyone's here now, can we? <laughs> well, what are you t talking about? Everyone is here. We've been waiting for you. <laughs> Sorry, but you're wrong. 
I've been waiting 10 minutes now, so it's okay if I punish the one making us all wait, right? We all agree it's a violation, I'll arrange punishment right now. If it's me you're waiting for, I'm here. That's Kyoko, isn't it? I will I will lay odds on that. Either way, that's a good point to end this part, just before we sort of actually head into the meat of the trial. So, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.